Hi, I'm Nick. Today I'm going to be changing my upper and lower control arm bushings in my 1989 Isuzu Trooper. So let's get to it. I've already done the other side, so it's not like I'm an expert at it, but I have successfully done it once. So I hope I can help somebody else. I already have the front skid plate off, and I'm going to just remove the entire brake assembly here and the hose because this whole thing's going to end up coming off. Uh, and then I'll remove the shock from the lower A arm, the sway arm, and I'm going to leave my hub and spindle on because I've already rebuilt it. I put new bearings in, I put a new transaxle in. If if you feel that you need to replace yours, now would be a good time because you'll have it apart anyway. Go ahead and move these clips. There's one here and there's one underneath. <laughs> so I'm removing the upper ball joint bolt and just that one. And I'm gonna whack the spindle somewhere in, the, in a meaty part. I'm going to try to just hit it right there on the side. Yeah, either side should work. If that doesn't work, I'll have to use a pickle fork. I really don't want to though. It worked. There it goes. That noise means it's going loose. Here I am under the car in the middle. You recognize that transfer case, I'm sure. So this is the bolt that keeps tension on the torsion bar. Torsion bar connects to, sorry, I can't get a good angle here. The torsion bar connects to the control arm right there. So you'll need to release this. To do so, you just back it off, heck is it, back it off counterclockwise, obviously, but uh, it said that it's a good idea to make some match marks up here with a paint stick or something on the bolt they say, and even how it's oriented here where the bar goes through that coupler. This front one came off okay. I couldn't get the, the bolt out. I'm going to have to probably, like I said I shouldn't do, I'm going to have to loosen the control arm and move it around and get that one out. I recall having a problem with the control arm hanging up on the back one unless I got it out first. Um, we'll see. But right now I can't quite get that back one off because it's taking a lot of force and not breaking loose. So I've got a wrench, hopefully, on the back side of it. And I'm going to try to put a foot, my foot on my breaker bar and see if I can break it loose. Okay, 
sacrament your way. bolt that holds in the main bush that bolt there very difficult um, I tried pushing as hard as I can with my foot before it didn't work so I do have a little trick you'll need to remove the bolts that hold on the lower ball joint so I'm gonna try to use the jack to push on this wrench which is connected to the big bolt of the main bushing that goes through the the lower control arm but just a note if you're going to do that you have to have that coupler on here otherwise it'll just spin okay just a quick recap on what I did so far I had this torn down a lot further than I had intended to because I did the transaxle on the other side and I put the clip in, but I had this one done right after I got the car because it was the boots were torn and leaking and there's a garage I thought I could trust and all, but they didn't put the clip in. So when I took off the took the spindle off from the A-arms, it more or less just kind of pulled the boot off boot off and fell out. Um, it's okay to have it running like that, I guess, because when you have it all put together, it can't come out, it holds it in. I figure the clip is just to hold the transaxle in when when you're uh, doing work on other things so it doesn't fall out. I might have one left from when I did the one on the other side because I bought a new one and the clip came with it. If I don't, I won't be able to get one all that fast uh, and I wanted to use this soon for a camping trip. So <clears throat> I'll, uh, I'll probably just put it back the way it came apart. But as it turns out, um, I'm working with a lot of space because I had to remove everything. Uh, there's the lower A-arm. There's the upper A-arm. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show, and I, I found filming this more difficult than I thought it would be, lighting angles, uh, doing it by myself. But when you're removing the big bushing that goes in here, you've got this bolt, or this bolt and this nut. The head of the bolt basically is a spline that intersects, that goes into this coupling here, and then the other side of the coupling goes onto the torsion bar. So what I did to get the leverage on it was I had the wrench on it, and I put my jack underneath the wrench and jacked up on the wrench. That wasn't as easy as it was on the other side because clockwise on the other side it's just much easier to get on the wrench. Um, but I somehow able, was able to pop it off. So the next thing I'm going to do now is remove this sucker in here. You still can't see it. This one. The big bushing where the torsion bar hooks on to the A-arm and if you think you can press it out or drive it out, go for it. Uh, I tried. Um, might be able to do it with some all thread through it, but I found that for me it was just kind of a waste of time. And I'm better off just using my drill and drilling out the rubber. Uh, and then my sawzall to make a slit. Um, I'll show you as I go along. Rubber's hot. So I try to drill the holes as close as possible, but you can't get too close. The drill will just fall into the hole you just made. But the closer the better. So the next thing I do is I get this piece out here on the inside 
And I used to have an easy out, I can't find it, but you basically just jam anything in there you can, uh, grab it somehow, and twist it until the rest of the rubber that you weren't able to drill breaks away. I'm just trying to cut through that outer diameter of that bushing. If you do cut through and you hit the uh, press diameter, if you hit the uh, hole that it actually gets pressed into, just clean it up. It's not a big deal unless you totally mutilate it. Okay, hot chips on my arm. That's, man, I'm not thinking at all. So, once you have your once you have your slit, you want to grab a. I'll get my drop plug back on. Grab a punch, and right around where you made your cut, just start trying to cave the thing in on itself. So, I'll work on that for a while. <sighs> that was difficult. That took longer than I thought. It was rusted in there pretty good. And I have a bunch of burrs that I'll need to clean off too, but it's out, so I'll keep moving forward. This one was easier, but still difficult. I, with a smaller drill, drilled through the rubber and the center part came out fairly easy, although I broke my drill doing it. Uh, you can actually just tap that out. I could. You may still need to push it out and twist it to break the rest of the rubber, but I didn't need to. Then I went and I made a cut through with the sawzall and started just tapping from the front until I could get under it here and tapped through with a wedge, tapped through with a bigger wedge, and I was able to tap it out from the other side. It took a long time, but not nearly as long as the big one took over here. That may have looked easy, but it wasn't. In order to get this out, I actually ended up using my Dremel and a cutting wheel to cut here on the inside, cut a section out, and then I got as small a wedge as I could find and pounded down in this area to try to collapse it. Also on the outside, I cut with the same cutting wheel uh, the best I could without digging into the control arm myself and also tried to collapse this side. I collapsed this flange this way and this way, and I also took a wedge and got under here the best I could. So you have to do all that. Drill the rubber out might help some. That's not as crucial on these. I did a little bit though. And um, with enough banging, it finally came out. That's just the outer shell and the rubber though. The inner shell is actually frozen onto the shaft, and I'll get to that in a minute. Here I have the upper control arm rod in the vise. I already took the sleeve off of this side entirely, mangled it a little bit, but I'll just run a file on it. And this side the sleeve is still on. Just wanted to show you what I do. I tried a cutting wheel, and that does work for up in this area you're going to need it. But here I found it easier just to use my grinder and grind it flat down until I start to see uh, the steel turn dark. That means I know it's getting very thin. I go back as far as I can and I finish it off with my drum.
So it can be done, it's just a royal pain in the ass. Well, that was a lot harder than I thought it'd be. I've already done it once, but this one was harder. So basically you bang one bushing in, then you feed the rod in through the other side, and bang the other bushing in. But it's not that simple. You have to, I was hoping maybe I could use the bolts to drive it in, but it just bends the A-arm in, unless you brace it somehow, but I wasn't able to. Uh, so the only thing that kind of worked was for me to take a socket and put it over the bushing and I wouldn't want to say tap because I had to bang it pretty hard but you can't just do that you have to get your vise set up and get it so it's touching here and here yet the bushing isn't obstructed by anything and I don't know I would hate to say to remove any material to make it easier because it's supposed to be tight for a reason but that was pretty tough but in any case I'm done now I'm gonna put these on but not tight so where I'm sitting now I got the upper A arm reinstalled I put the shims back the way they came out uh, let these loose of course and I did drive this bushing in to do so uh, I used a piece of all thread I used a washer that will clear the inner sleeve of the bushing this is 5 8 11 all thread got a bolt on 5 8 washer and this is the washer that will clear the little bit of inner sleeve that pokes out put it through and then I would put on anything uh, that would clear I would drive that with a wrench and it pulls it in but the key is you have to have some kind of washer or something that clears the the uh, sleeve in the middle. The big lower control arm bushing arrived. I measured the bore with my snap gauge and I'm getting 1.731 1.732. Pretty consistent. I measured it six times in different ways. Uh, this is Depending, I, the other side was about 20 thousandths bigger, this is about 15 thousandths bigger. That's not something that you can easily press in. Um, an FS2 tight press fit would be about 2 thousandths bigger for this diameter. Uh, that's just too big to make it work. And I tried to make it work on the other side several times. I actually destroyed two bushings before I figured out, hey, they're being shipped too big. Moog says, 1992 and up and they cross reference to Beck Arnley so my concern is yes they they fit in every other way but I don't know this I'm just speculating but maybe 1992 when they redesigned things uh, maybe they did go up slightly in diameter and they were the same every other way but essentially they don't fit I'll show you what I do within about three thousandths. So I'm turning the larger of the lower control arm bushings down a touch because according to my book it's far too large to be pressed in and like I said before I've broken and uh, and I've already destroyed two of them on the other side trying to get them in at the size they're shipped so this is what I do. I made a little dig here that I can put a piece of all thread through and I have this washer here that clears the inner sleeve and then just a regular 5 8 washer and a 5 8 nut 5 8 washer 5 8 nut on the back and the hole through this that the chuck of the lathe is holding is big enough for the sleeve to pass through I turned this down so it'd be easy to get the tool in there I'm just gonna use this old I think it's a kind of metal tool it makes a surprisingly nice finish. Okay, here I am pressing in the lower bushing, the large one, and um, it's uh, I'm using a piece of 5 8 11 all thread. I wish I had 5 8 18. I actually ordered some, but it's not coming in for a while. I don't know why the shipping was so slow, but <clears throat> this takes some effort. Um, 
it gets more and more difficult the further in it goes, but I'm gonna drive it in if I have to use a cheater bar or whatever. So I put some oil in the bore. I don't know if that helps at all, but uh, it is still going in, so I'm gonna keep at it. All right, got the bushing back in. Now I'm gonna work on getting that lower A-arm reinstalled. All right, I got the lower A-arm back in. I got the I got the sway bar back on, the shocks on, and I have the torsion bar tight here and installed. I don't have the bushings, the bushing bolts tight yet, and I did not tighten up the torsion bar over there. Um, what you'll probably find is when you put the sway bar back on, it holds the lower control arm in a pretty neutral position, as if there was weight on the car. Um, I put, I looked at my other one and because it has weight on it and the angle was slightly different so I jacked it up just a touch now I'm going to tighten the bushings uh, after I tighten the bushings then I'll put tension back on the torsion bar I'll put a decent amount but probably I'll have to put more later well everything's back together don't forget to tighten your bushing bolts on your upper A-arm to do so, you can put a jack underneath and take the weight of the car and then level the car and tighten them. Or I guess you could put the wheel back on. Or you could, before you have tension on the torsion bar, you could just get the angle right by looking at the other side. I still need to bleed the brakes and I definitely have to get a wheel alignment. Like the full on, not just toe. Caster, camber, everything. But I think I'm good to go. Trooper lives on.